Stephen, at the end of the day, after physicists put all their laws together and we have some grand explanation, we'll always come back to the why question. Why those laws? Why the cosmos? And at that place, many scientists say, uh, you know, that's beyond science or we can't do it. And maybe theologians have some ideas that maybe scientists reject. But the, there's a wall there. Is that a fair question to ask? What, what are the kinds of, of, of questions, the kinds of data that we can look at to address that question? Why? Why the cosmos? So the thing that I, I've been very curious about, kind of uh, whether there might be a simple rule that corresponds that can reproduce all of the, the richness of physics as we see it and, and so on. And what I've realized is that sort of our, our traditional intuition about the fact that it must be that that rule must be something very complicated to reproduce everything that we see, that that traditional intuition probably isn't correct. And that it's perfectly likely that there could be a very simple rule that can reproduce all of the richness that we see in the, in the physical universe. And I've been interested in sort of the space of all possible such rules and in the apparently quite, uh, uh, quite bizarre seeming project of just searching through that space of possible rules and trying to find kind of uh, by search, so to speak, trying to find our particular universe in the sort of universe of all possible universes. What would that rule have to be to to at least satisfy you to a first approximation that maybe you found something interesting? Well, so the, the, this rule, if it's a simple rule, it's something that's sort of beneath space, beneath time, beneath yeah. all of the things that we normally think of as being uh, obvious aspects of our physical universe. So there's kind of a, a you, you go through sort of uh, looking at is that, you know, here's a possible universe. Does it satisfy sort of the basic criteria or not? And often it's a long way away from satisfying even the most basic criteria. One of the things one has to realize is that it's very unlikely, if the rule is simple, it's very unlikely that it will be almost correct, but not precisely correct. Mm. That is that, you know, you'll have a rule that has, you know, three dimensions of space. It'll have electrons and muons and tall leptons, <laughs> but it'll have just this one little weird bug out there on the side. That's very unlikely to happen. If there is a simple rule for the universe, you're either going to hit it dead on or you're going to be way wrong. Um, and so as you, as you kind of look through sampling the possible rules for the universe, it will tend to be the case that, that they most, most of the time they are very obviously wrong. Mm. Now, you know, there are things that you can see in, in whole classes of rules. You can see things like gravity. Um, something like Einstein's general relativity seems to emerge. You can see things like some asp aspects of quantum field theory start to emerge. Um, the, you know, this is encouraging, suggests that the kinds of models that one's looking at um, probably have something to do with the way our actual universe mm. works. Um, but I guess one of the things that, that I sometimes wonder about is, you know, one day I suspect we will actually find the rule for our universe. I don't know how simple it will be, I think if we actually find it in the in the near future, that'll probably be a sign that it was quite simple because otherwise we wouldn't have been able to find it. But let's say we have this rule, then we can start asking, why is it this rule and not some other rule? And I kind of try to think about how would we think about that question? And I don't know, but I kind of look to sort of history of things about the ways that questions like that might get addressed. So for example, you know, when, when Newton was first studying celestial mechanics, the motion of planets and so on, he was saying, well, once, uh, once you start the planets in their motions, then, you know, the, the law of gravitation and uh, laws of mechanics will govern how the planets move. But he said, we don't know how they started. You know, that, for that, we must, you know, look to God or, or whatever else mm -hmm. to, to originally set the planets in, in their motions. Uh, similarly, when Darwin was talking about natural selection and, and biological processes, he sort of said, well, you know, what happens once we have life, we can say something from natural selection. Um, I'm not sure I agree with everything he said, but, but he had some very good things to say. Um, but he said, but understanding how the first piece of life could arise, we don't have anything to say. Now, at the time when, when those people were, were working, there really wouldn't have been anything to say. Right. Um, for example, if we, if we ask the question about planets, 
we now know that you know it used to be the case, you know, in in philosophy and so on, people would talk about you know whether things were necessarily true or not, and and people would say that the fact that there are nine planets or now it's maybe eight or, or eleven <laughs> or whatever it is. Um, the uh, you know was an example of something which was not necessarily true. Yeah, it was just it was just something that happened to be the case. But in fact, now we know that if you have a star of about the size of the sun and you have you know some accretion disk forming and so on, that actually you probably have you know five, ten, fifteen, twenty, about that number of planets. Mm -hmm. It is actually something which we can derive from from further principles. But in Newton's time, it would have been quite inconceivable to see how that would possibly work. And so this is kind of a, uh, for me now, as I think about kind of how would we answer this question of why is it our particular universe, um, I, don't, I don't yet see a way to do that. I think there are two questions here. One, I think that you're asking, is if it's this rule, why is it this rule rather than a host of other rules? It's another question that says, if it's this rule, why is there a rule at all? And where did that rule come from? Which is the much harder question. About that, I don't have much to say. <laughs> I've thought about it. Um, I think that um, uh, it's, um, um, you know, I think this is a place where um, you know, we can, we, one thing that, that's interesting to, to say is when we found the ultimate rule for our universe, I'm sure we will find a way to say, this is the only rule it could possibly be. This is the rule, you know, A equals zero. <laughs> this is rule number one. And there'll be some way of formulating things that makes it rule number one. Um, but does that really answer what's going on? No, it doesn't. Does it, um, is it the case that the way that, um, one thing that might be the case is, is that um, because of the way our brains are set up, emerging from this universe, that it might be the case that it is inevitable mm. that the rules for our universe must be simple with respect to the formulations that our brains can produce because our brains can emerge from this universe. I don't think that's in fact a correct argument. Mm. Um, I think there's a sort of a more fundamental issue of whether the rules for our universe are simple that sort of goes beyond the details of our particular brains and our particular formulation of those rules. Um, I mean, it is sort of a perhaps in a sense, the most fundamental fact about theoretical science is that there is at least some order in the universe. It could be the case that the universe was utterly orderless and ruleless, but it is not. And the question then comes, uh, you know, how do we, given that there is some order in the universe, um, what, uh, you know, can we, can that turn into a very simple rule that uh, will be sort of the explanation for our whole universe, or will it be a more complicated rule? If it turns into a simple rule, why that rule and not another rule? I think we're uh, judging by history, although history will probably speed up. Um, we're a couple of hundred years away from being able to answer that, at least based on the, on the course of scientific history to date.